despite the overwhelming evidence that is all around us. For many people in this world, the world in which they live is a world that is without God, without the God of the Bible. They may believe in something, because we all believe in something, even if we claim to believe in nothing. But we're told in the Bible that it is only those who believe in the truth of the scriptures who are wise. Everyone else, it says, is just a fool. And the evidence of what we truly believe can be seen not only by our words, but it can be seen by the way that we live our lives in how we conduct ourselves. And perhaps that is the point of the psalmist in Psalm 14. Those who do not believe, those who do not put their trust in God, in Christ, are foolish. Especially since the Word of God has made it abundantly clear concerning the path that we must follow in order for us to spend an eternity in the glory of heaven and to avoid an eternity of pain and of suffering because of our unbelief. So here, in verse 1 of Psalm 14, uh, as well as in Psalm 53, the Lord says, the fool, nava in Hebrew, those who are foolish, those who are senseless, and as we know, the world is full of foolish people. But the real fools have said in their minds and in their hearts, there is no God. Therefore, they say, I am not accountable to anyone. I'm not accountable to anything except to myself for the way I live my life. And the Lord hears the language of our heart, whether it is just a faint whisper or whether our heart screams out our unbelief. But this doesn't change the fact that we are all accountable to the God who has created us to love him and to obey him. And yes, with our mouth, we may claim to believe in God, but our lives betray us. And, and our lives reveal the truth. Because, it says, we are all corrupt. Shaheh in Hebrew. We are rotten to the core. We are like withered leaves. And so our evil nature leads us to commit wicked things. Deep within our soul, we have set ourselves up against God. And our lives fan the flames of our destructive nature. And so we walk in a path of darkness and in a path of deceit. And in addition to that, it says we have all committed abominable things. Taev in Hebrew, shameful things. Things that we are too ashamed to even talk about. And so there is no one, the psalmist claims, who does good. Because by nature, we are 
incapable of doing good. So we embrace what is wrong. Even as we sin against the light of our own conscience. And so our flesh is pleased with our sin. We're pleased with ourselves. What a disturbing picture of all of us the psalmist paints here. And in verse 2, he points out that the Lord God has looked down from the glory of heaven. He has intently gazed upon the sons of men to see if there are any who understand Sahel in Hebrew, who are wise enough to see the truth of who we really are, that we are all morally and spiritually unclean as we stand before a holy and a righteous God. And he knows if there, if there's anyone who seeks him, anyone who seeks his forgiveness. But in verse 3, it says, the truth is that all of us have turned aside. Sur in Hebrew, we have all turned away from the light of the truth, and we have chosen instead to run in the opposite direction from what is right and what is what is good and what is true. And all of us have all together become corrupt, it says in verse 3. Allah in Hebrew. We are morally stained and we are spiritually infected by our sin. And so there is no one, it says again, who does good, not even one of us. Sweeping indictment of all of us. We need help. We need a savior. We need Jesus Christ. We need his forgiveness. We need his sacrifice for our sin. And hatred for God and corruptness of life are at the core of the persecution against those who truly do follow the Lord. For without Christ, we are enslaved to our evil desires. We're enslaved to the enemy of our soul. But the psalmist asks this in verse 4. Do all of the workers of wickedness not know? Do they not see? that with their voracious appetite, they eat up a hail in Hebrew, they consume and devour my people as they would eat up bread. And they do not call upon the name of the Lord. Why? Because their hands are stained with the blood of their sin. Do they not know that they are on dangerous ground? And yes, the psalmist concedes in verse 5. At times, they may tremble in fear, and they may be in great dread because of their sin, but still, even after that, they continue to stumble down the path to eternal ruin. They may close their eyes to the truth, as many people do, but that does not change the truth. For God is with his righteous generation, with those who truly do belong to him. and They have not been abandoned by God. And even though those who do not believe the truth are fools, they believe that they are wise. Just ask many of them. And they will tell you. So in verse 6, the Lord says to them, You seek to put to shame the counsel 
the teaching of the afflicted who belong to me as they testify to you of the truth of salvation in Christ and you, you ridicule them and you persecute them and you attempt to discredit them and, and to destroy them. But you are foolish because the Lord God himself is their refuge. Makasat in Hebrew. He is their shelter in the storms of life, in the storms of persecution. But the foolish do not believe in a God who can deliver us out of their hands. And so in verse seven, seven, the psalmist prays and he says, oh, that the salvation of Israel, of the people of God would come out of Zion. Oh, may the Messiah come to us at a time when the Lord restores his captive people. Oh, Lord. May the time of our weariness, the time of our oppression come to an end. The time when the Messiah will come and he will rule and he will reign forever. Then Jacob will cry out and rejoice. Then Israel will rest and be glad when all of those who truly belong to the Lord come together in the fold of the shepherd of our soul. How blessed are those who wait for him. How blessed are all those who wait for the return of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You've been listening to Bruce David Bell pastor of Borean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.